young and we didn't want to be exposed Even though it was cold, we were never wearing proper clothes Always trying to be cool, trying to be those bad guys Smoking cigarettes behind the school Always trying to be cool, trying to be those bad guys, you know laughing at long rider's comment thank you so much long rider for the uh, donation there he just said uh, where the hell have you been slacker thinks he can take time off we we are leaderless without you i, I love it um thanks so much for uh, saying that uh and i appreciate the donation um i Look, the reason why I haven't been on for quite a number of weeks is because I've been setting, well, I've had weddings. I've, I've been going crazy with weddings over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I've com been completely changing uh, the studio and also setting up a, another studio in my, uh, in the in the main studio in there where I've done green screens and everything. And I'm going to really up uh, the quality of what I can do. Uh, particularly when I can go in and say do unboxing videos and demonstrate gear and things like that. So uh, I'm going to be able to have multiple um, spots now that I can move to and switch. So I've spent quite a bit of money because um, I've also got, you know, like there's there's other ATM switches in there and, and camera systems in the other room and all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to have some really amazing things coming up uh, in the coming weeks. In fact, the video that you just saw... Um, I uh, had that playing from the Raspberry Pi. So I bought a little Raspberry Pi. They're like a tiny little computer uh, that you can connect. Um, and a lot of you aren't going to understand what this means, but I can use it as a hyperdeck connected to my ATM Mini, uh, and therefore it takes all that processing away as well. So I've been extremely vi uh, busy. So th this studio here has changed. Uh, I've put all soundproofing and everything all in here. 
I haven't been able to do that in the main studio because it's too big and I use that still for studio photography work, so I'm sort of sharing it. But uh, I've set up a sort of curtain around the area that I'm going to do, but I've painted a big green wall and all this sort of stuff. So, yeah, just uh, stay tuned for that. I'm still getting just about finished. Uh, it's a massive work around Shush Siri. Uh, it's a massive work around trying to get everything uh, up and running. Uh, so hopefully uh, it's all going to be uh, worth it. So let me just see who's in the chat. So uh, Alex is here. Um, who else we got? 85 Films is also here finally <laughs> saying that. Bill said great wedding photos. Thank you so much, Bill. I uh, really appreciate that. Mm. Having a Milo. This is my son's business if you're interested in... Um, uh, that he's a he owns his own concreting business. Uh, just bought a massive uh, truck and trailer the other day. It was um, it's huge. Uh, he's really excited about it all. Um, so who else is here? Um, Hero is saying notification gang uh, there as well. Um, what else? Whoa, a YouTube studio. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it. Wait till you see the other section of this. It's really going to be interesting. Uh, how it all uh, looks. I'm dying to try it out. I'm, I'm still trying to learn how to get all the green screen working and uh, the interfaces in the other room because what I've got here is I've got two cameras here that I can switch to, but this is the main camera. Then I've also got a camera that can switch down and show my desk just uh, just down here. Um, but in the other studio, I've also got a two cameras set up as well uh, with a, a, a big bench and, like I said, a green screen background. So I'm really going to be able to up the quality of these um, stream so it's going to be uh, really good fun and I'm, I've got to get used to using the camera because the camera used to be above the monitor which was over here now it's directly in front of me um, so it's a completely different look um, but I thought you know I'll try it all move it around uh, I'm using a 4k monitor now and a big sort of screen here that has all the images that I can share from both this studio and the other studio so I've got so much uh, sort of happening um, you know, and it's really going to be uh, pretty exciting. So I can't wait to start using it all. I'll be using it probably sometime this week coming. I should have it all up running and ready to go because I've got a few things I've got to review, some exciting things actually, some things I can't tell you about. Um, let me just say here. Uh, <laughs> what's that saying? Uh, the happy uh, clam, unique gimbals in the background. I know they're all in the other room. I've got to, I've got to try and sell them. Alex, I've now back into Milo time because it's uh, nearly getting to winter here, although it's gorgeous today. Uh, it's around 20 Celsius, so I might take Ziggy for a walk after this. Um, but it's, um, yeah, beautiful, but it's starting to get a lot cooler, so I only usually drink the beers in our, in our summer, uh, spring, sort of late spring. So they will come back again, <laughs> just not at this stage, unless I really need one. Um, do you still use the ice? Uh, well, I haven't for a while, Mike. I've still got them. Uh, the issue is, uh, and I spoke to Kerry about this in the last wedding we did, um, the problem is the batteries have died inside the units themselves. Now, I can't complain because I've had them for I don't know how many years. Um, the, I think the latest ones might have removable batteries. I'm not sure, but I do, I do also have removable batteries that I bought um, when I got them, so I can replace them with the, uh, removable batteries. Um, but the internal batteries have died. So because I've been sent these other ones from Soonwell, I just use those at the moment. Um, I mean, look, yes, they are amazing and you really do get the quality you pay for, um, but I just can't justify spending the money for an ice light when you can get similar products like the Soonwell and stuff like that um, for that do a similar job. They're, not, they're nowhere near as built the same. I mean, if I dropped the seam well, it would crack into 15 pieces, whereas the ice light, I've dropped that many times and they're built like bricks, you know, and, and the quality of light is stunning. But it's the battery issue. Like I said, they only aren't last so long. So, yes, I do still have them. I don't use them as much now uh, because of the battery issue. Um, Gilbert's here as well. G'day, Gilbert. Good to see that uh, you're here at the moment, not in bed at this stage. Good to see that you're going to be able to get out and about again now, which is going to be fantastic. Um, hello, David. Joining from One Turner South in Melbourne. Well, you are close. 
Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, Woody Wood said hello all. Send him regards from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Kasim said greetings from Vancouver. We are in pre-program um, mode. Uh, we'll be starting in a few minutes because I've got some interesting things to talk about, cameras and stuff like that, that these new rumours coming out. It's going to be a big year, I think, for Sony Ahead, uh, which is going to be really uh, fun, I think. Um, yeah, so hello from Vancouver, Washington, or BC. Oh, he's talking to someone else, I think. Gilbert, sounds very dead, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, some have said it sounds too dead. I mean, look, you can never please everyone, can you? That's the problem. Um, I mean, but I'm still working on it all, so it's still all happening. Uh, where's the uh, black... Oh, yeah, I haven't turned that on. It's. I don't... You won't see it, actually. Cause, oh, let me switch it on, but I don't think you'll see it. <laughs> the black hole is back <laughs> but i don't think you can see it i uh, sort of <laughs> it's right behind me i need to move that now so that it can be somewhere else that you can see the black hole perhaps i need to put it over there <laughs> but there's another blue light sort of shining through there too uh what else it's almost summer in Scotland. It was 10 today. Oh, God, that's so funny. It's nearly, it's uh, 20 degrees here today, Celsius. Well, it's probably going to be warmer than that, but, uh, yeah. Um, but I love Scotland. It's beautiful. I can't wait to go back there. I think my next trip definitely is going to be the UK. Uh, I need to see my auntie, who's getting old now, obviously, um, and I need to see her. So I'll, I'll hopefully, when we're allowed to, we're not allowed to travel at the moment. Uh, because Australia has basically no virus, we can't travel anywhere. Well, you can, but you've got to spend 14 days in hotel quarantine when you come back, and you've got to pay for that. Uh, so it's pretty expensive. Um, so apparently the UK have said we can travel there now, so they've opened it up for Australia. It's classified as a green zone. Uh, but who wants to spend 14 days uh, paying for a hotel accommodation when you come back into Australia? So we've got to wait until... Uh, everyone's vaccinated. I think it'll be probably next year. I don't think it'll happen this year. Uh, the government's pretty strict on, you know, because we've got COVID under control here, they don't want to sort of let people in. So I'll just have to wait. But that'll be my next trip. Uh, well, I'm more than sure it's going to be the UK. So I can't wait to have some meetups. I'll be certainly organising that with Gilbert. Um Steve's here as well. G'day, Steve. Uh, blessings from Puerto Rico. Um, hello, David. Nice day in Los Angeles and a good Miller Lite day. I'm sure it is. Very lucky for you guys starting to warm up. We're starting to cool down. Um, Mark's here as well. G'day, Mark. How are you going? Uh, I ordered the new Sony 14mm lens. Oh, you're going to love that for astrophotography. Yeah, it's There's probably not much better than that lens. Uh, I, it, it really is going to be brilliant. Um, I'd love to get my hands on one, but like I said, <laughs> Sony, don't send me, send me stuff. Uh, hello from Dublin, Ireland, and everyone. Uh, hi, Nick. Um, Chris said, uh, big uh, Sony news coming up. Yeah, I've got some big stuff to talk about. Well, it's rumours, but they're probably pretty well spot on, um, I would think. Uh, is the Sony 14mm what they use for Biden uh, and Carter's? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Uh, hi from Florida. Woody said, hit the like, folks. Yes, really appreciate it if you could uh, give a thumbs up, guys, because it does let people know that I'm back online. I've got to get used to see. I keep looking up here because the camera was always up there. Now it's down here. I, I've got to get used to looking directly at this thing. Um, yes, I would appreciate it if you did give a thumbs up. Um, here I said, I hope the new Sony APS-C camera has a new sensor. Well, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, coming up. Um, thank David. I <laughs> love that black hole. I love it. Um, can't go anywhere el else uh, here in Ireland. I say, see you the same as well. Uh, you had better come and see us, Brit, soon. Yep, definitely next year, Gilbert. Uh, we'll be over for sure. Like I said, I've got to see my auntie who lives in Preston. Um, but but we'll do the whole, uh, you know, uh, England. I'll, I'd like to go to um, Scotland as well for sure. So there'll be a few Scotland's be Scottish people uh, that I'll be meeting as well. Uh, laugh out loud. It means that the wide angle distortion controversy just some oh USA gossip. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't understand what that meant. 
All right, so we are 10.02 p.m. So let's get stuck into it because I haven't been on for, I think, two weeks. Um, and there's a stack of stuff that's been announced or sort of the rumours and things like that that have, uh, have been discussed. So let's go through them all because, um, boy, um, it is interesting. Let me just see. Bill said, I have the Samyang 14 millimeter for the Sony for astrophotography and it works great, only it's manual. Yeah, but manual's not a problem with astrophotography. I always go into manual focus anyway. Uh, just pre-ordered the APS-C 11 to 20. Yeah, that's going to be great. I can't wait to get my hands on those. Uh, it should be sometime this month, uh, Long Rider. I should be getting all of those. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting those lenses. All right, so let's get started with this um, because we've got so much stuff uh, to go through. Um, this is a discussion about wild rumours. So we've got these interesting articles that's been shared now about the wild rumours. Now, the, the funny thing is it's not mentioning uh, the A7 um, IV, which is really interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, all these other cameras are being mentioned now without the A7 IV. I still think the A7 IV is going to be coming out sometime this year. But, but these are new rumours. Some of them have surprised me a little bit, uh, but... It, in, an, in some ways, it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, if they get released. So what it is, is they're saying that there's wild rumours that there's going to be an A7S Mark IV. Now, we've only just got the A7S III, but, but this is going to be different, and we'll, we'll sort of discuss that, and it's a, a bit of a strange one, the rumours that they're talking about there. Uh, there's also the A9 III um, that they're saying is going to be announced, and it's the 100mm GM and a high-end APS-C camera. So I'm going to sort of discuss these uh, in a little bit of detail so we can go through them uh, just to sort of see what's what's out there. But boy, I mean, some of the things that they're saying, so they're saying that there's two sources that uh, have been saying about these cameras. And basically they're saying Sony's second 8K full-frame E-mount camera will be the Sony A7S IV. So there's going to be an upgrade to the A7S III but it's going to be an 8K version. But there's some big differences between the two versions. And this is what makes it really quite interesting because um, they're saying, so the Alpha A7S III will be a 40 megapixel. Now they'll need that to obviously go 8K um, with some extreme high ISO performance as the A7S III. Like, I, I can't believe that it will give you the same low light performance as what the A7S III is. But unless they're going to be doing some voodoo-y stuff in it. But I still think the A7S III uh, will probably be cleaner in low light. But but uh, this is a, so it's an 8K version of this. Uh, they're saying it's going to add uh, XAVC HS 8K 10-bit 422. Um, and it's XAVC uh, SI 10-bit 422 in 8K. The camera can output full frame 8K at up to 30p. Nothing above that, obviously, at this stage. It would just be too much. But 30p is uh, ample for that. Full frame and Super 35 over sample 4K up to 60p, uh, which is also nice. So you can do the Super 35 as well. And that's what you can't obviously do with the A7S III. Um, and they're saying... Um, Full uh, frame pixel bidding 4K up to 120. The video quality of the Alpha S... Um, a7S Mark IV uh, in 4K can be higher than the Alpha 1. So they're saying it will probably be better than what the Alpha 1 is. Um, and then the Source 2, what they're saying here, is uh, that the A7S... Uh, oh no, well, let me just discuss this too, because there was another... Where else did I see this, that they were talking about um, this? That I did read, and it might be further down here, but there were, I did read that they were talking about having uh, another camera without the mechanical shutter. Oh, that's the A9 II. Yeah, uh, A9 III. Let me keep going. So the A9 III, and I will come back and sort of go through these. So the uh, A9 III is a special camera which is using the same body as the A A1. So they're saying it's going to be the exact same body as the A1. Um, but drop the mechanical drive. So in other words, they're not going to have a, a mechanical shutter. And I did talk about this previously, that I think this makes total sense to me, because really, after you've seen what the A1 does, you really don't need a mechanical shutter anymore. 
And I think this is a, a great idea, and I, I think this is the future for Sony, and I did sort of talk about this a few weeks ago, that um, with the A9, I very rarely ever use mechanical shutter. I only use mechanical shutter when I'm using the flash. Um, so the A1, you don't even need to worry about that because you can use flash with the electronic shutter. So they have worked it out now and developed it so you can do that. So really... If I had the A1, I would never use a mechanical shutter at all. Um, so this is the future. So I'm not surprised by this at all. It, it makes the camera smaller. It will be cheaper. Uh, and also, there's way less wear and tear. Uh, so this is the thing you've got to understand about that, that having that sort of feature means there's just not going to be any wear and tear in the camera, which is brilliant. And I think this will probably come... I wouldn't be surprised if this is even in the A7 IV. It could be. Um, but I think the future ones anyway will definitely have it. So the, they're saying that it will have that uh, no mechanical shutter. Uh, it has the new XMAR RS sensor, which is using the same ADCs as the, A, uh, the A1, uh, and the A93 uh, has only a 2 millisecond readout at 14 dB. They're just talking about how fast the readout is there. And they're saying that uh, because of the no mechanical shutter, it can be lighter than the A, uh, the A, basically the A7C. So that camera is extremely light if you're holding it. That's why Aaron loves it so much, because it is so light. Um, so not only would you have no mechanical shutter, but you're, the weight of the camera itself is going to be a lot less. So I think this is probably a real winner. Now, I, I, it, I'm, I was not quite certain that they would bring out an A9 III because the, A9, the A1 is so good, but... This could be the sort of thing that they say, well, we're going to now sit that, you know. Um, oh, I got a, oh, Ike gave me a super chat as well. Thank you so much, Ike. Um, what do you say? Um, let me see what he's saying. Uh, from Photomia, Nikon, the Nikon rules. Oh, it just came up now, that notification. Um, was it Dogecoin to the moon? I love it. <laughs> Uh, how are you, buddy? Um, so, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure because of that, but now this probably makes sense because they've made the two cameras different, in other words. So I think looking at it, uh, the A9 III, if my A9 went, probably would interest me more than the A1, only because I don't need all the features that the A1 has, but the, uh, the A9 III would be a really interesting camera to be shooting all the time, um, you know, mechanical. But... Uh, also, it will be a lot cheaper. I, I still think today, if I was buying another camera now, I would buy another A7S III. I, I adore that camera, um, and I think I would buy one straight away because I'm really happy with the 12 megapixels. Uh, in fact, the interesting thing was that when I did the last wedding, because I, I, I've been using so many... Um, uh, the a7s3 lately in so many shoots in the weddings the last wedding i couldn't because i was doing a fusion wedding video so i had to use the a7s3 uh, as my video camera uh, for the day and so i went back to the a9 and i can actually tell you that the focusing and i did notice it but seemed to be snappier in the a7s3 than it was in the a9 also, the delay, I'd never sort of really noticed it much before, but there was a fraction of a delay on the A9 that I just don't get with the, um, the A7S III, that when I go to focus and then click, the A7S III is immediate, and I'm sure the A1 would be the same, but it's, it's, a, it's just immediate, and I'd never noticed it before until I had to swap back again. See, the, the funny thing was, before I got the A7S III, the A9 was my favourite camera I'd ever, ever used, but now I definitely think it's the A7S III. I, I just adore it. Now I'm dying to see if they bring out this new one, what it will be like. So that new one could be the interesting one for me that, you know, you're getting more megapixels if you need it. I'm not really fussed about that, but um, if it has that same performance that the A7S III has, uh, it really sort of, you know, quite excites me. But I've really been loving the 12 megapixel file sizes. I've been loving when I'm doing my weddings and I'm taking them in and editing them and the file sizes are small. Um, quick to edit. Uh, 
yeah, and I just love it. Um, but I did notice, like I said, the first time ever, I've, I've thought, wow, uh, the A7S3 seems to be better than my A9, and I've never said that before. But, you know, it's it's interesting. So the, it looks like there's going to be an A93 that comes out. Uh, they're saying here that to the A93, no mechanical shutter, camera weight is lower than the A7C. Uh, there's also rumours still about the 100mm um, 1.4 GM ma uh, lens coming out. Um, so we've heard about that for a while, but that would be a really interesting lens as well. Now, high-end um, APS-C camera, uh, they're talking about that they're going to bring out a new high-end, uh, like A7, A6000. Let me see where that was. Um, here. So let me show you this one. Um, I will come back to the chat, guys. I'm just going to get through some of these stories and then I'll go through the chat with you all. Um, but it, it's saying that the, this is the first possible specs or rumours of an A6000 series. Now, I wasn't sure whether this will even be the naming. It, it would be interesting because it seems to be that they're keeping the same body. But what is fascinating about this is they're saying this is going to be a mix between the A7... Um, S series and the ZV-1. Now, I love the ZV-1. That's my second camera that I've got up there. Uh, I used to bag it, which is quite funny. Um, but Sorry, um, Siri, shush. Again, please? Oh, she's over there. Where's she coming from? <laughs> oh, that's my phone. Uh, we put it on silent. Siri shouldn't come up. Um, so what was that? Was a message? There's nothing going wrong somewhere, is there? Let me just check that. Just making sure there's nothing wrong there. It's you and this. Oh, someone else is talking. Um, so uh, this looks really cool. Now, I'm a bit surprised. I thought they might have gone to an A7C or something like that type body. Uh, so I'm surprised they're keeping it in this type body. But what they are doing is they're going to have a flip out screen. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about the A7R four in a minute as well um so this screen uh is going to flip out like the zv1 which is really nice uh, they're saying here that uh, 99 percent near certain rumor info so it looks like it is going to happen um it's an a6 6000 replacement same general body and form factor uh, but with many smaller improvements they took from the zv1 and the a7c so it looks like it's going to be a mix of those two cameras which is pretty exciting i think um, the, they're saying the name is the A6700. It's going to have a 32 megapixel sensor, 4K60, 10-bit video. Now, this really interests me too. I'm, I'm actually quite interested to see what this is like. Um, fully articulating screen. So again, that ticks off the boxes for what I want. I mean, I know it may not for all of you guys, but it certainly ticks off uh, the boxes for what I want and like what Aaron uh, loves. Um, readout at 12 uh, bits. 12 bit is 17 milliseconds, so it's not near an A9 or whatever, but it's still not bad. Form factor is identical to the A7C, um, but I don't understand why the same form factor is the same as that because it looks like an A6000 to me. But anyway, uh, better LCD and EVF and minor tweaks to the body. So this is quite an interesting rumour. Look, at least now we're starting to think, well, they're not giving up on APS-C because we did hear that, you know, the A-series cameras are going to be stopped. And I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit later. Um, but... I don't know. It's quite exciting. Put down what you think about this. G'day, Tammy. How are you? Um, so let's go back to, because I want to talk to you about this one, which is another rumour. Um, and like uh, I think it was Longrider said or someone said before about what happened to the A7 IV. I don't know. I know it was Pema. <laughs> he said it there, what happened to the uh, A7 IV. I mean, who knows? Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to be being mentioned at the moment. But this one... Uh, is while rumours of the first Sony A7R4 specs, or five, sorry. And what they're saying in here is pretty interesting. Um, so let me show you. They're saying it's coming soon. Um, they're saying similar upgrade path as the A7R2 to the A7R3. So, you know, a reasonable upgrade. Uh, picture quality keeps the same, but the uh, usability is greatly improved. And there's reasons for that that I'll talk about uh, as we go down in here as well. So they're saying basically that it's going to have the same 61 megapixel sensor. I would have thought they would have upped that. Um, I'm surprised. I thought it would have been at least 80 or so, but 
like I said, I, I mean, I don't need it, but I still would have thought with Canon probably going to do it that Sony would have added more megapixels in there as well. Perhaps they just think they don't need to do that, but um, it's going to uh, support 4K60. So again, that's brilliant. Um, it's going to support 8K24 or and 30p. Well, they're saying 30p maybe, but at least 8K24. So all the cameras now that it look like are being announced seem to have 8K, and I wouldn't be surprised if the a7 IV has this as well. Uh, I didn't think initially, but now I'm not quite certain, because remember when the a7 III was announced, it did blow everything away and they surprised everyone. The longer we wait to get the a7 IV announcement, the more I think they'll put in it. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's 8K now. Um, no 4K 120 uh, to avoid competition with the A7S III. That, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, same as Cinetone, so probably all the new cameras are going to have that as well. Hopefully the A9 III will. Uh, hopefully they'll have picture profiles or something, but um, we never got that in the A9 like Sony sort of said they were going to give it to us. It's going to have, have S-Log, 2.3 and HLG support. Same XAVC, uh, HS Intra support up to 4.2.0 10-bit and 4.2.2 10-bit uh, in respective mode. So so it looks like uh, the A7 uh, Mark V is going to be a very, very strong camera if you're after megapixels and also video. Um, it's just not obviously going to have the performance of the A1, uh, it, you know, in capturing, but it still looks like it's going to be a really strong performer. Um, what else are they saying? Same uh, Bion's XR, but it's going to have the new menu system, lossless, compressed RAW. Um, it's basically going to have the same uh, AF performance as the A1 and the A7S III. And like I said, I definitely noticed. You don't notice a uh, performance of uh, the autofocus when you're just using a camera for a while and not sort of swapping. But because I'd used the A6, A6, A7S III so much lately, when I went back to the A9, I definitely noticed a difference. And the A7S III is better, um, which will be the same as the A1. Um, compared to the A7R4, so it's going to have much better auto-focusing anyway uh, than that as well. Um, better IAF, etc., and they're going to put it in video, so you're going to, are, are going to get that in video. Same chassis, uh, so it's going to be basically exactly the same as the A1 and the A7S III and the body stakes. Uh, same EVF as the A1 and the A7S III as well, which is brilliant. I love that EVF. It is just so good. That's one reason why I wouldn't buy a camera without it. Um, that's um, really important to me, particularly in Australia's you know, harsh sun where you can't see things. Um, other things they're saying about it too, it's going to be cost $3,500 uh, United States dollars, so that's going to be the price of this camera. Uh, is there anything else that they're saying as well? 5.5, uh, oh, that went funny there. Oh, it's, I don't know what's going on there. Went a bit weird on the screen. Um, 5.5 speed uh, anti-shake, so, you know, your anti-stabilisation, your stabilisation there. 2.6 million dot foldable LCD screen. Now, while we're talking about that, let me just show you. I've just got to find where it, it actually showed it here. I got this. Uh, this was on Sony Alpha Rumors. And there is a massive... You're probably not going to see much on this, but I will expect... The screens in these new Sony A7 III's and the A7R 4A to be way, way better than what we'd seen before. Now, you can see it here in this actual image. Uh, if you look at the one on the left there, which is the old screen, compared to the one on the right, which is the new screen, it's a huge difference. I can't believe they didn't put this on the A1. I really cannot believe they didn't put that on the A1. It, it's just crazy. So if you get an A7S uh, 4, they probably will have this new screen as well. That would be another reason to just buy that because of this screen. Uh, and they're saying here, here comes the very uh, first uh, image of the new A7R uh, 4A. Uh, the difference I can find is the missing Sony logo. So you notice the Sony logo is missing from under there. Uh, so that's changed. But you can see that it looks much better. And they do say the screen looks better as it uses a new higher resolution version uh, there as well. So it's gone from 1.4 million dots to 2.359 uh, whatever million dots. It's a massive upgrade. Uh, a huge upgrade uh, that I'd love to have, and I'm very jealous that those cameras now have uh, got that. So I would think that um, 
you know, you're going to get that with uh, this A7R5. Uh, I don't think there's really much else that we need to do. It's going to have the new dual card CFE uh, A cards, uh, the uh, fast, you know, CF Express fast A cards. Uh, that's going to be a standard now, I think, in most of the new cameras that are going to be announced coming out. Maybe not the A6700 uh, that we just discussed, but I think all the new ones, including the A74, uh, will probably have that same card in system in it now as well. I think it's going to become the standard uh, there as well. Um, I'm just seeing if it says anything else. Um, no, that's about it. Oh, full-size HDMI, yeah, of course. So that looks really exciting. So on the rumour fronts, nothing mentioned about the A7 IV, which is strange. I still think that's going to come out this year. So we'll have more to discuss on that, you know, as time goes on. But... It looks like soon we're going to have a new A7R4. Um, uh, I keep saying the A7R5. Uh, there's going to be the new A6700 uh, or whatever they name that as. Uh, and I did hear rumours that they were going to do a Mini A9 uh, in one of that too, but then I, I haven't heard anything more about that. But I did hear that, that it was going to have similar performance to the A9 series. They could still do that, and that may be a totally new model uh, something like an A7000 series or, or um, I don't know, whatever they wanted to call it. We're going to get a looking at it, a, a new A93. Like I said, I was a bit sceptical about that. I didn't think we'd have that, but it looks like that's going to happen, um, which is really exciting too because, I mean, like I said, my A9 is, is getting on now, um, and if it did break down, I would have to replace it with something and that could be one that i'd replace it with but looking at that a7 um s uh what was it the a7s4 that might be the one that i i mean who knows there's just so many options now with what we're getting with sony it's it's just crazy um anyway i think it's fantastic uh, i'm going to keep going and i'll come back to the chat uh, as we go on because there's so much to sort of talk about here Uh, let me go to the next one here. Oh, hang on, here. I just wanted to show this because this is basically the new grip on the A1. Uh, so I wanted to show how that looks. I'm not really thrilled with the designs of, of the um, bolt-on um, battery grips. I mean, I just, uh, I've got one for my cameras, but I never use them. I just don't like them being on. I like the smaller form factor. I just don't think they have the same look as, uh, you know, when you buy a camera that's everything built in. That's where I think the, like the Canons and things like that with the build the bigger cameras and Nikon that build these bigger camera bodies with the battery grip built in is a nicer feature for design uh, if you're looking at it. I just think it looks a bit clunky. But anyway, uh, if you do need the extra batteries or to hold on to a bigger camera uh, at least you now you know can get it which i mean it, it's good like i said i've got them but i never use them i just wanted to show you that anyway um also this chart I, i'm going to share all this so you'll be able to have a look uh down in the video down below but this is really cool because um this tells you about sharpness of all the lenses that are out there. Well, not all of them, but, but a lot of them. So it does give a rating, and it's interesting too because it gives you all f-stops as well. So it goes from f1.4 up to f16. Uh, and then it tells you about how that lens is la uh, rated uh, over those f-stops. So this is a, quite a cool article uh, if you want to look at it, you know, and it sort of shows like a lot of people were thinking too that the 20mm 1.8 GM and the Sony 24 were, were almost identical. But if you look at it at uh, one point, um, where are we? Um, out here at, at, at F2, for instance, it's outstanding, whereas the Sony uh, F, um, 20mm F1.8 is just very good. Um, in the, in the corners, the, it, it, you also get a corner measurement and a uh, center measurement. Um, so, you know, it's it's quite interesting if you're looking at the whole thing. So if you do want to check out what your lens uh, sort of works like, uh, this is a good article to read, and it just shows how good this, the Tamron 70 to 180 is as well because a lot of the scores in there are outstanding and excellent, um, which is terrific. So this is great, and it goes into, into Sigma lenses as well. Um, there's no Samyang lenses, I don't think. It's just got a Tamron lens and um, 
some sigma. Then if, if you go to the article itself, there may have more lenses that are on here. But I just thought I'd share you this to be able to check. If you're interested in a lens, this is a great thing that you can look at to see uh, how uh, the lens will actually perform. So that's that story. And then also, this is quite exciting too, because for the first time we're now hearing of uh, third party manufacturers making this CF Express Type A card. So um, they'll come down in price. At, uh, initially, the problem with them now is they're extremely expensive. I think I paid seven, eight hundred dollars or whatever for the two cards I got for my A7S III. They're, they're really, really expensive. Um, so it'll be great to see third parties now starting to bring this out. So they're saying that they don't know when this will be announced, but they're hoping that it will be soon. There's no price announced yet or anything like that, but it would have to be cheaper. So anyway, more competition is always great. And particularly now that Sony are moving all of their cards onto this, uh, you know, it seems like it's a really good idea to be doing uh, this. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some others too that, um, that obviously they'll pay Sony a licensing fee, I would think, um, but who knows? Now, this I wanted to discuss because this is quite sad. I haven't got any sad music, I don't think. <laughs> what have we got here? Hang on, let me just check quickly on here. Oh, no, that's cricket. That's a sound. Hang on. No. Ooh, that's not bad. <laughs> hey, but it's more like suspense. Hang on. Um, the end of Sony A-mount. Sony a finishing A mount. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, it's pretty sad in a way, but look, I'm not surprised. Is anyone really surprised by this? Uh, you know, I, I definitely, I don't think I am. Um, I should have downloaded some, um, you know, some really sloppy, sad music and played it while I was going through this article. But I just thought I'd take you through this quick thing because it gives a little bit of history about them. And this is where the Sony mirrorless all came from. You know, that they, they were so far ahead of their time, these Sony uh, mirrorless cameras, you know, with the things like flip-out screen. The, the flip-out screen is probably still the best uh, screen system I, I've ever seen uh, that they had. Um, but anyway, if you, if you look through it, it looks like they're, they're no longer going to be produced anymore. You know, and you look, say, here at the A77 II, the designs were actually really quite lovely if you're looking at them. Um, but, you know, this is the A68 uh, uh, that's here. Um, this had the 40 autofocus as its most highly touted feature. It used 79 AF points. Um what else have they got there? It was announced in 2016 uh, and featured a new backside illuminated full frame 42.4 uh, megapixel XMAR R, um, CMOS sensors. Um, but basically what's happening is they're, they're, they're just stopping the production of them, I believe. So it's finished. So if you did have that, I mean, there'll be lenses around forever, I suppose, but uh, it could cause you to uh, obviously move and shift over to mirrorless. But it doesn't surprise me. Canon are doing the same thing. They're getting rid of their um, bodies. And Nikon will be doing the same thing. Uh, so it's going to be the same with all of them. But, you know, it's sort of being official now. So anyway, it's sort of is sad. Uh, and the last story before I come back to the Q&A... Uh, I agree, Gil, but di uh, digital SLRs are dead. No one's going to be purchasing them now. Um, this was interesting because it, it, Petapixel had uh, the best mirrorless cameras in 2021. Um, and they're saying that uh, there's a whole article you can read here, uh, but they're saying their best choices of mirrorless cameras, uh, the best overall mirrorless camera was the Sony Alpha 1. I mean, I still think probably nothing can touch that at this stage that's market, that's out now. Um it really is an incredible camera. If you're after a camera that does it all, uh, you know, this is probably the one. Um, so they're saying that's got the best uh, overall camera. Uh, the best mirrorless camera for professionals is the ZV2. Uh, sorry, uh, Z7 II. Mm, the cocky's out there. Um, that <laughs> cocky. <laughs> I've got to be careful. That's cockatoo. It's short for cockatoo. Uh, YouTube, don't ban me. Uh, cocky is short for cockatoo. <laughs> Um, best hybrid, um, 
the Nikon uh, Z7 II is an amazing camera. It is a really good camera from what I've seen about it. Um, and I think, you know, Nikon have always made great cameras, and this one is a, a really good uh, camera. So they're saying it's the best mirrorless for professionals. I'm not sure how they come about these things. It's probably in the article. But um, the best hybrid mirrorless is the Canon EOS R5. Um, I don't know. I, I actually think the A7S III is, but, but that's me. Um, I suppose if you're coming from a Canon ground and you need more resolution, uh, the EOS R5 probably, you know, would it would beat it if you're after resolution for sure. But for me personally, I think the A7S III is the best uh, hybrid mirrorless camera that's out there since now that I've been using it. Best video focus mirrorless camera is the A7S III. That doesn't surprise me one little bit. Um, and the FX3, I suppose, would be the same. But like I said, the lack of EVF on the FX3, I would not buy it for that reason alone. But that's a personal choice. Um, best medium format uh, mirrorless cameras, the GFX100S. That's a great camera. If you were wanting to get into medium format without spending ridiculous amounts of money, and you're going to get basically the same quality, the Fujifilm are terrific. Best crop sensor mirrorless camera, the X-T4. I agree with that as well. I think... Uh, Fuji have had the range with the X-T4 for a while. Uh, the A6700 that we discussed before may change that, but at the moment I, I probably agree with that. Best beginner mirrorless camera too is the Fujifilm X-T30. Um, so they're showing best overall camera here is the uh, A1, so that's the picture we all know what the A1 uh, looks like. I'm not going to go through this, but uh, you know, with detail, but uh, the Nikon uh, Z7 II, um, they, they finally really upgraded that camera to what it should have been at the beginning. Now it really is a, a great full-frame camera. Um, what else? We've got the R5, uh, which was the best hybrid camera. Um, and like I said, I'll share all these down below so you can have a look there. Best video focus mirrorless camera was the Sony A7S III. Um, and the best medium format is the Fuji. Fuji, I, I love the designs of all the Fuji. They're very retro in their look. This is a really quite a big, I mean, they're bigger cameras. I think the S was a bit smaller. The original one was huge. Um, but, you know, I'd love to play around with one of these cameras. I'd love to really give something like that a go. Um, very good technology. I, I've always loved the X-T4's design factor. I mean, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful, like the old cameras from years ago. And I, you know, I, I just, they're like the rangefinder type looks. Uh, very mechanical and digital. You've got to turn, you know, basically controls for everything. But I like that. That's why I love the A9 so much. Um, and the best mirrorless is the uh, X-T30. Uh, they're saying as a beginner camera again nice retro look and feel about it so yeah it's um interesting so that's basically all the stories for today so let's open up the q a um and we'll go through that together so let me scroll back so if you have anything you want uh, answered or whatever um chime away because uh, i'll spend a little bit of time here um i love it because gilbert said you better come and see uh as Brit soon, yep, definitely. As soon as the borders are open, Gilbert will be coming over. Um, what else? Um, oh, yeah, I did. I went right down here. Mark said, uh, My prediction looks like it may come true. No mechanical shadow, not coming Sony cameras. Yep, I've said the same thing, Mark. I do definitely believe the mechanical shutters will not exist uh, in a year or so. I think all the newer cameras that come out, the A9, uh, the A1 has proven you don't need it. Uh, now, like I said, the only thing stopping me with the A9 was the fact that you needed it for flash. Now that that's gone, there's no reason. And really, think about it. You shouldn't be using it because it, it, there's wear and tear there. I know the, these uh, shutters, uh, you know, give an awful lot, 400,000. You probably never reach it. But you still have a wear and tear in your camera where when you're shooting electronic, you just don't have that issue and it can be dead silent. Uh, there's a lot of benefits for shooting electronic. And they're getting, like I said, better and better and better. Um, so I think, I agree, I think that's going to be the, the way it's going to go. Um, there's no way they are going to re release an A7 IV already after they just released the A7S III and the FX3. But I thought they'd never release the FX3 after the A7S III either. So who knows? Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a bit soon as well. I mean, I do think that's a bit soon. I think the A7 IV has to come out before that, surely. You would think surely. But reading those specs, Sony may want to put out an 8K camera that's the video line camera that, you know, will be their, their top-end video cameras to sort of compete with what Canon and everyone are doing. So nothing surprises me anymore. It really doesn't. Um Kasim said Vancouver, he's saying he's from. Um, hope they put some sort of uh, vibration feedback for that silent shudder. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Uh, thanks, Ike, for that super chat that you gave. <laughs> saying Nick on rules. Um, I did that to take over the ticker. Laugh out loud. I oh, know. I've just got that up there. It's going to annoy the hell out of everyone, isn't it? But, you know, if it works, it works. Work with you, Ike. <laughs> um Dodge baby, what does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. Um, Froggy said, well done. I'm not sure what that was about. Ike, you, what's that, Ike? Uh, you pick out your Lambo yet. Are you getting a Lamborghini, Ike? <laughs> hey, David from Las Vegas. Uh, do you, you use DRO for video or stills? No, turn them off. Um, Got to buy a Telsa, I think. Um, he's getting a new car. I love my V8. Well, I don't think I'd ever want to let that go. Um, Nikon only good for slow moving. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, Ike said just how I like him. I'm better be careful what I'm going to put up here. It's getting out of control. I think. Um, hi David and everyone from Croydon. G day, Leslie. How are you, buddy? Um, if it's an A6900, I'll get it just because. I love it. Pema said, I know, Pema, I know. We're, it's the rumours have just disappeared. I still think the A7 IV will be announced sometime this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's sort of around September, October, and then released in November for Christmas. I would not be surprised one little bit. Um... A few guys talking amongst themselves, Ike and Longrider and everything else. Uh, I hope they don't make the A9 smaller than the A9 II. I, I don't think it'll be smaller. I think it'll be it'll be the same body size. There's no way they would make it smaller. So it'll be the same as the A1, and it'll be the same as the A7S III. Uh, so that's basically the size that that will be. Um, if this is legit, I need one. Uh, Tammy's also said, so glad to catch this one. Looking for a budget sub 2K video camera. Hmm. Well, well, you know what? I, I, I still love my A6000 series. The A6600 would be great. I mean, I'm using the A6400 now here. Um, but really, you know, if you're just after a good video camera that, that gives good 4K video and good 1080p, you still can't beat the A7 III. If you don't want to spend too much, Tammy. I, I still love it. I'm still going to be... I still use the a7 III all the time uh, in wedding videos and stuff like that. That's my second camera that I use. Uh, it has all of your profiles and everything else. So I, I probably would get the a7 III. I'm not sure what that's running at at the moment. Let me just see what it is. Um, let me just go up here. File, new tab. Sony A7, one, two, three. I'm just trying to see if I can get big in H up. Does it come up? Should have gone to B and H. B and H. Sony A7, one, two, three. Do, 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 do. Here we go, I think, is it? P and H photo. Yeah, uh, I'll just switch back over here because if you look at if you look at that, really it's a bargain now for what that camera is. It, it still is a really good camera. The A seven three is not an issue. It's great at focusing in video. Uh, it's a great stills camera too if you wanted that aspect of it as well. The only thing it doesn't have is a flip out screen if you wanted that though. But you know, if not, you could probably jump up to the A7C, but that's probably uh, a lot more expensive. But 1698, and then you could say, you know, throw a Tamron lens or something on there. Um, let me see what the Sony A7C is. A7C, it probably will be over two, I think. Um, 
Oh, no, one seven. Yeah, we'll see the A7C also is a great option too. Um, if you wanted that, then you'd also have the flip out screen. So you're paying a hundred odd dollars or whatever it was difference, $200, I think. So I probably would recommend an A7C or an A7 III. Uh, the A7C, if you want the flip out screen, uh, but then you haven't got like the EVF, which the A7 III has, or the, the good EVF. It still has an EVF, but it's not a very good one. But there's a couple of options there, Tammy, that you could uh, use. Um, what else have we got? Let me just switch back. Uh, uh, the A6700 seems pretty amazing for an APS-C camera. It does. If that's what they release, it's going to be incredible. If you're after just a four, a cheap sort of 4K camera, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see where they price that camera too. Um, but don't we need crazy features? We only need ISO, aperture, focus, shutter speed, uh, shutter, press button, camera doesn't take great photos, and person behind uh, it does take great photos. Yeah, I agree, Pema, but um, the camera does help. I mean, the, the thing too is you have to understand you can do things now with cameras that you couldn't do before. I agree about the art side of things, uh, that you can still do uh, you know, whatever you wanted. Um, but, I mean, I can do video, for instance, like I never could have with the older cameras due to the way that they autofocus now and, and, you know, the bit rates that you're getting now and things like that. So the technology definitely does make a difference, but it doesn't replace the art. I agree, but it does still make a difference. Um, Ike said you can uh, already find those same specs in the Fuji X-T4. It doesn't do... Oh, yeah, it does. It does um, 4K 60, but I think it's only very limited in time, Ike. Now, we don't know how long um, it will be in this camera either for overheating, so I'm not sure, but perhaps the new processors are better for that. But I know it's very time limited if you're going to shoot the 4K. Um, why wouldn't Sony put 4K 120 in the A7R 4 uh, R5, I mean. If it's uh, competing with the EOS R5, sorry for taking so long to write this. <laughs> I'm slow at typing. Yeah, no problem. Uh, because I think they have to probably protect the A7S series. Um, I think I probably agree with that. I don't think you'll get it on that camera. They'd want to push you more towards the um, video series of cameras to get those really high-end specs. Ooh, another super chat. I think uh, Ike's going to lose his position. <laughs> <laughs> what did Delta Dave just say? Let me scroll down because I'm I'll just see where it is. Um so Delta Dave gave five dollar donation from Delta Dave. Nikon has the same life expectancy as Sony A mount. <laughs> oh boy. I love it. Oh, that's gonna keep scrolling. I know it doesn't, it just says latest super chat. I can love that one. No, oh, that's funny. Uh, let me just come back. Uh, here, where were we? Um, oh yeah, down to here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Gilbert said, Tema, uh, uh, Tamiang, buy an older camera if that's all you want. I have a three-year-old Sony a7R three, and I'm happy with it. That's right, you can still take great photos. I'm not den uh, denying that at all. Um, Ike said, uh, Long Ride Yikes, I haven't been on his channel in months. I ditched him and... Who's the one you ditched, uh, Ike? I ditched him and Tony at TNC. Who's the other one you ditched? Oh, did I miss it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know who he was talking about. Who's the other one you ditched? Um... By the way, uh, what's that say? By the way, that's the Sony A7S um, 5, uh, 4, yes. Um, I just realised it's in the other something else. Uh, Ike said, uh, these features are probably going to start bleeding over. Uh, the A7R4 is looking like a mini A1. It is, yeah, I agree. Uh, they, they're getting very, very close, a lot of these cameras. You've really got to justify jumping up, don't you? And that's, that's the thing. Uh, and the A1 is the A9. Ooh. <laughs> Ike just put out another one. He wants to have that super chat thing scrolling across. That's a crack up. What did he say? Um, those features are probably going to... St oh, hang on. Where was it? Oh. Just, yeah, the, Z, the Z9 coming. Yeah, and that probably will be incredible, Ike. I agree. Thanks for the donation, though. 
Um, where were we? Uh, let me come back up to here. I think we were somewhere over here. Those donations throw me off. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're around here, probably. Yeah, we were discussing this, yeah. Now, I agree, because this is the thing for me, too. Uh, looking at the features that are coming out at the moment, I really... You have to justify what you're spending. Now, if you want an A1 and you want everything, well, then obviously you would pay the money. But you're looking at, say, what you would pay $6,000 for the A1. If they're sort of talking that the A7R4, uh, the A7R5 is going to be $3,500, that is a massive saving over what the A1 does for similar things apart from the 20 frames per second. If you don't need the 20 frames per second, um, the cameras basically are very overlapping one another. You know, you, you seem to be getting the 8K now, I think will probably be coming the standard in most of these cameras. Um, resolution is similar. Uh, video features are very similar. It's just if you want that niche market part, you know, that, that you wanted that um, mechanical shutter, uh, that, sorry, you didn't want to use a mechanical shutter, you just wanted the electronic shutter at this stage would push you to the A9 III or the um, A1. Uh, but I, like I said, I think the future is the next version of the A7R after this one will probably not have a mechanical shutter either. Um, so they are all blending in together, I agree. Uh, and it seems to be at the moment where uh, it, it's a hard choice to decide what you want to get. Like I said, at the moment, I'd probably get another A7S III if I was buying right now. But who knows when these new cameras come out. Um, Marcus said the A7 III needs a successor. Uh, all other cameras uh, got multiple new modes since the A7 III release. Yeah, but look, it, it does, but the A7 III is still a good camera. Uh, it is still a really good camera. It's just that we've had such advancements just lately. I mean, I, I would buy the new version of that just for the new screen. Um, but we will. We'll definitely get a new one probably sometime this year because uh, it is now the one that needs to be replaced. Um Mark said, uh, 40 frames per, sec uh, per second and no mechanical shutter perhaps got me to think bigger than Sony. I'm not sure what that one was. Um, no mechanical shutter, electronic shutter, all in the same, uh, it, all the same in my book. 40 frames per second, I guess that's for people who always miss the shot with 20 or 30. <laughs> you, if you miss a shot in that, you're in trouble. Um, I tend to never, ever miss a shot if I'm dealing with 20. So I don't know. Like I said, there's diminishing returns, isn't there? But there is there is an issue if you can go to, say, 24 and even 30. Who was that? Delta Dave. Nikon is in trouble big time. <laughs> big troubles. <laughs> You've got to read the end of this. Hang on. I've got to show you this one because it's quite funny. Um, Delta Dave said... <laughs> Nikon is in trouble big time. Sincerely, Ken Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I don't know, you guys, seriously. Um, now I've lost where I was again every time these chats come up. Um, I don't know. I'll just probably come down here. Let's just keep going down here. Uh Sony A-mount, Sony touted one big mount and at the same time telling us the A-mount users that they uh, still were supporting A-mount, uh, That were, were they lying? Well, I suppose you can buy adapters, so they probably have still saying that you can support it, I think. Can you get, I know you can go the other way from A-mount to E-mount, can you, is there an adapter that goes the other way? I don't know, because I've never had one, so I'm not sure. Um, yeah, look, it, like... We all knew it was going to happen, Max. That That's the unfortunate thing. They're just not going to keep those sort of cameras around. They can't justify the expense, I suppose, is the thing that's going on here. Um, Gilbert said, uh, Sony are telling you the truth, but that was then and this is now. Who seriously is going to buy digital SLR when they have so many great mirrorless cameras today in 2021? Well, I certainly wouldn't be buying one now. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, nobody in their right mind believed Sony was going to still support A-mount. We all knew better. They just had to say uh, that they supported it to keep those clowns who believe them. <laughs> That's not very nice, Ike. Um, 
they said uh, that five years ago. Yeah, I know. And, and five years is a long time in technology. Can I mark these so I can remember where to come back to? Oh, actually, I can do that, can't I? If I just leave that on, I know, because then I click on it and it'll be gone. Um, Nikon uh, Z72 named best professional mirrorless camera by the people who don't live <laughs> in a basement in Florida. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Basement in Florida. I know who exactly you're talking about. That's quite funny. Um, I don't know. You guys. Uh, I'm going to keep going down. Um, the original A9 came out five years. I know it's incredible and I'm still using it. It's still a brilliant camera. That was the, the beginning of the end. Yeah, you're probably right. Um Long Rider said, don't forget Canon is coming out with great cameras three years from now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You guys. It was the A9 216, then the A7 R3 in 217. After that, there was no way they were going to go backwards to A-Man. I agree. Yeah, I really do agree. Like also said, and then the real name in the coffin was the A7 III in 2018. Yeah, I, that really changed things because it was so cheap at the time for what you got. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it was cheap for what you got. Um I've got no idea what that means, Bill. What's that? Dodge as in Dodge coin. Oh, coin, yeah. Um, use my RX100 uh, on an electronic all the time. Yep, yep. Um, Ike said, yep, the A7 III is still legit. Still a great camera. I use it all the time. Uh, I really do. Uh, Gilbert said, the A7 III is on offer in the UK for $14.99. And if you've got a second-hand version, they're probably really quite cheap now. Um the A7R3 cost about the same. Yeah, the A7R3 is a, a terrific camera. At the price now uh, that that is going for, it is brilliant. If you're after a high, higher megapixel camera, the A7R3 is great. Still an unbelievable buy. Like, if you don't want to chase the new stuff, these older cameras are bargains for what you're getting with them. The A7R3, the A7 III are still brilliant. I wouldn't go to the A7 II. The focusing on that camera was not good compared to the new ones. But... And also you had the older battery and things like that. But but the A7 III and the A7R III are still brilliant cameras. And I still wouldn't hesitate to buy one of those uh, today if I had the money and I needed one. Um, the A7 III viewfinder is poor quality. Yep, it, it's definitely nowhere near what the new cameras are. And that will be updated in the next one. It's okay. I mean, you don't notice unless you change to a, new, um, a newer model. Like if that's all you use, you wouldn't notice a difference. Um, 247 meter. G'day, buddy. How you going? Uh, I want my noise making shutter. Um, used A7 threes are going for 1200 to 1400 right now. That's great. Yeah, it is. They're, it's terrific. Um, thanks, Dave, for the donation. I love the way you're um, hanging on each other. Uh, I'm over waiting for the A7 IV. I will have to be. It will have to be some camera and reasonable price in Australia. Yeah, who, who knows? Probably 20000 Australian dollars. <laughs> Sometime this year, I'm still picking it. If you're trying to equip a beginner, you can get an open box A6100 for around $500. And even that's still a great camera. Um, Ike was saying the Z9 will be coming soon. Um, that will be a good camera. Um, open box A6100 for $500. Um, <laughs> I had the best comment. Um, what's Pema saying here? Uh, is anyone, if it's anyone knows Ansel Adams and Steve McCurry, um, other, other legendary uh, photographers, uh, took world record photos with less features cameras, uh, less features in the cameras, yeah. Australian photographer uh, Trent Parkle and others shot amazing shots. They certainly did, Pema. Uh, and uh, look, I've got no doubts about that. But but like I said, the technology is giving you the ability to do things that you couldn't do before. Um, you know, and that's, that's the difference. I'm not saying you can't take amazing photos. Of course you can. You can still take amazing photos with anything, even an iPhone. Um, but the iPhone is a, a terrific camera. Uh, but the art will never be replaced. But the technology certainly helps. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think you can, you know, deny that. Um, Vipin said, nice meeting. Thanks, mate. Um, David Osley is the only Aussie photographer that counts his uh, opera house shots with a... <laughs> 
It was epic. Yeah, I know. I love that shot I got of the opera house. And that was with the iPhone. I couldn't believe it. It was unreal. I had so much fun there. Um, uh, what else? Um, Amar, you can't have it till the 2030 Olympics. That's when the R1 will be ready. <laughs> Uh, you got to be, um, you're going to be crying, old man, long rider. I love it. You guys behave yourselves. Um, I've got that donation from uh, Delta Dave. Thanks, Delta. Um, this Pema said, "This is a show about Sony news. I can think we all agree. You can take a good picture on a box brownie if you're a good photographer. Um, none of the none of the features uh, is necessary." Uh, ISO aperture. Oh, okay. You're just saying that you don't need all these extra features. Um, with no shutter, they should be able to do 1,000 frames per second. It is going to be interesting. One thing I meant to say to you before too, and I have been picking this for a long time, that uh, the once we go full electronic and you can shoot at 24 frames per second or um, 30 frames per second, I'm talking about stills, uh, it does bring then on the interesting fact of, and I think this is definitely the future, I, I think we are definitely going to be shooting video in the future and just capturing stills from those videos. Remember, when you get up to 8K, if you can shoot with that sort of megapixel and you can shoot um, 24 or 30 frames per second uh, like that, if you up your shutter speed, you could then just grab stills off. And I think this is probably what's going to happen in the future. I do believe that, especially now we're going all electronic and everything, um, we'll be grabbing stills. We'll just fire away and then choose the best still that you want. Um, Sony have to do, uh, Sony have to drop some of their cameras at saturation on the market. They, they yeah, I sort of think you're right. I mean, but it, you know, it's interesting how much it's changed because what, five years ago or whatever, probably even less than that, you used to go into a camera shop or whatever and there was no Sony cameras to be seen, whereas now there's, there's bucket loads. It must be a nightmare to decide which cam camera you choose. And like I was saying, I agree with what Ike was saying too, that the, the camera specs are just overlapping one another uh, and it's tough unless you really know what to do, which camera to buy. Now, those cameras, I suppose, have already been produced and, and the R&D has already been done, so it probably doesn't cost them much to produce them. But, yeah, there, there is an awful lot of cameras, I agree. It makes it tough if you didn't know what you were doing. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> what's, it, what's Heath saying? Nikon and Canon will drag out... Uh, the sunset of, of F and EF mounts for a few more years. Um, <laughs> Ryder and Amar are just, just arguing. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's quite funny. I'm not going to show them all because you guys crack me up. Uh, you are right, David. The A7 III is still great, but I don't want the old menu anymore. Yeah, I know it does make a di big difference. And like I said, if you got... Uh, if they brought out an A7 III with a new menu and also that new screen, it would be so good. It really would. Um, I've got to go now, David. Great show. Thanks, Ike. Thanks for the donations too. Um, Tammy said, I had to pause my video, so I just saw your answer. Thanks, David. No worries, Tammy. Uh, nice to see you in here. Uh, David, what do you think about Sony making the R3 sensor for Canon? Well, it probably makes sense. Look, there... They're a, a money-making uh, venue, so to me, I think anything that Sony can do, why not? Uh, the thing is, too, they tend to keep their um, major sensors like the A1. The A9 was never, ever given to anyone else. Um, the A7, uh, the A1 probably won't be given to anyone else for a number of years. You think the A9 was five years old and we still haven't got, that still hasn't been given to other people, not that I know of anyway. So... Uh, it doesn't surprise me because remember, the divisions now are separate anyway. So uh, if the sensor division can make money, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they will, uh, you know, give it to someone else. At the end of the day, it's only part of it anyway. Like it's the the sensor is only one part of it. it. It's the camera system that you're used to. It's the menu system. It's the ergonomics of the system. It's the lenses that are available. It's the whole ecosystem. Um, so I I really haven't got an issue with that. Um, the A7 uh, R3 uh, still has the worst screen. Yeah, I know, it's terrible. I agree. Amo. The screens are awful in um, the A7 III's. Until these new ones come out, I've been 
going on about that for ages. Uh, not related, but which mic are you using? It's the Pod Mic Pro, I think. Uh, it's the Rode um, Pod Mic, I think it's called. Uh, it's the cheaper one that you just get in, but I love it. It's it's a great mic. Above me, I've got a Sennheiser that I just use when I'm doing other things. That's a boom one. That's the MKE 500, I think it is, uh, the one that I've got up there. Um, Man, you really uh, dug in. Thanks, uh, but I'm still several behind the live uh, view. <laughs> uh, supposed to get my A1 on the 14th. Oh, so exciting for you, Tony. Uh, you're going to love that camera. It's so good. Um, Raj said, uh, is the A7R 3 worth it? Yep, definitely. If you don't need all of the latest features, the R3 is still an amazing camera. Beautiful quality. The results files that you get on it. Good noise. Um, much better than, say, the A7R 4 um, The noise is, is way better in that regard. Well, it's about a stop. I shouldn't say way better. It's about a stop. But, yeah, I definitely think it's still worth it. Um, is, <laughs> is Ken Rockwell better than Hansel Adams? <laughs> I love it. Um, and A in the hands of a hack is still bad photography. Yep, so true. I shouldn't even show this one. I'm not going to. I'm not going to discuss that one. Uh, Michael said, "Hey, David. Hope all is well." Yep, terrific, Michael. Uh, I've still got to go back and get that cancer cut out there on the seventeenth. Uh, it's heal well though. It's just there. Um, there's just a little bit left. They say uh, they have to do a, a thing of margin. I'm going to be fine, but they have to do a thing of margin to take it out. So I do have to go back on the seventeenth of this month, uh, and they'll do a bigger cut. So I'll have to have that bandage back on again. Um, but they do that until they find no more of the cancer there. So, yeah, but I'm great, Michael. Thanks for popping in. Uh, I just paired my A7R4 with the Sony 135. I know, Tim, I know. The uh, 135, I really adore that lens. I really do. Um, uh, Tammy said, I just saw, Gilbert, that you helped as well. Um, we are great buddies. Long Rider is just a whole fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, what else um i love my r3 yep it's a great camera raj said uh just subscribed thanks oh thank you for subscribing mate welcome in, uh to the show and the family we're like a big family here it's uh, just a terrific place and david how did you find your wedding clients at uh the beginning and still uh now oh well look it took years i mean i've been doing it for years uh, I've never advertised. I just don't advertise. I just started sharing my work. Um, I, I got a lucky break because when I first started doing weddings, a friend of my daughter's actually, who is a very popular um, um, bride and also uh, the um, groom was also a footballer. Now, when I say football, it's Australian rules. Now, he had an awful lot of friends as well because they were a very popular couple. Um, so I did that wedding, charged them, uh, I can't remember in those days because I just started, but I didn't charge them a small amount. It was a decent amount still. But because I did that wedding, uh, then it just opened up referrals to everyone else. Now, the interesting thing was then it just took off and I didn't have to do anything. All I do is share the work that I do on Instagram and Facebook and word of mouth. And that's where all of my work comes from. I don't advertise. Uh, I just do. It just comes from word of mouth. So every wedding you do, it tends to build up. Uh, as long as your work is good, I think the uh, brides will find you. Uh, and you just have to be sharing your work around. You know, the more you can share, like with the florists, um, you know, the makeup artists, get like share all their stuff on Instagram and things like that, and the work will come to you. Um, Michael said, um, we'll be for you and your family. Th uh, thanks, Michael. We'll be fine. Um, good day. I am late again. I'm sure I missed a lot, uh, but please uh, me a brief recap of your topics, please. <laughs> You're going to have to watch it. It's been a big one. Uh, the topics are listed down below, actually. Um, it just talked about new camera releases and things like that. Um, uh, A7 um, full crossed uh, 2,500. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think probably around there. I think that would be about the price. It should be priced similarly uh, to what the A7 III was at that time with a little bit more for because uh, it's a, a few years ago. Um, speaking of the family, hit the like button before you forget. Yes, please do. That would be fantastic, uh, it, especially seeing I'm unsponsored. It does support the channel. Uh, David, you have a plastic surgeon do a Sony Alpha logo on your head. 
<laughs> it is a plastic surgeon that's doing it. Imagine if I did say that. Uh, can you make sure the scar leaves a, a sunny alpha uh, logo on there as well? Um, have a blessed evening, bro. Thanks, mate. Uh, and lastly, uh, before I sign off, I'm going to go and get a coffee. Uh, I wish Sony would come up with an Astro modified camera. I would buy one in a heartbeat. Canon and Nikon did. The A7S 3A, it would rock. Yeah, it's interesting, Bill. You probably find there is a market for that. Who knows? All right, everyone. Uh, thanks so much uh, for today. Uh, I will be back now. Um, Aaron, it's been tough on the Wednesdays to get back because he's been working flat out, uh, so he hasn't come back. Hopefully, whenever he's free, we'll pop on on the Wednesdays. Uh, my time, it's Tuesday's US time to do that show. Uh, but I will start now popping on more often, particularly now that I've got the studio set up nearly the way I want it. So it might still take another week or so before I start using it fully like I want to. Um, but everything seems to be working great. Um, so apart from that... Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks so much, everyone, for the support today. Any questions, leave it down below. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.